Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Well, Ramiplastin and L L Tromopeg are two uh, thrombopoietin receptor agonists, also, uh, uh, you know, and um, um, also known as N plate and Promacta. There, so uh, they both uh, have the same mechanism of action, and that is to mimic the effects of thrombopoietin on megakaryocytes and increase platelet production. They're different drugs structurally and chemically. Uh, they both interact with the thrombopoietin receptor on megakaryocytes, uh, but they interact with the receptor in different ways. For example, l thrombopag actually interacts with the transmembrane portion of the receptor, while uh, uh, ramaplastin interacts more with the actually the ligand binding domain, main of the TPO uh, receptor. Um, so they're both efficacious. Uh, I think you consider them a class of drug together. The advantages and disadvantages of the two FDA approved TPO memetics. Ramiplastim is a once a week subcutaneous injection that needs to be titrated and adjusted according to the platelet count. It does need to be administered in a doctor's office. Um, and the, you need to draw a CBC once a week in order to see what the platelet count is so that you can dose the drug appropriately. l is an oral drug, can be taken at home, and there are three different dose levels. I think that, of course, uh, some patients would prefer an oral therapy over a subcutaneous treatment. Some patients don't want to think about an oral therapy and actually prefer to come in and get their, their um, subcutaneous injection. Ramiplastim is a little bit easier to titrate per platelet count because you can do many different dose levels, so you can really fine tune where you want the platelets to be. You start at a dose of one microgram per kilogram, and you can escalate all the way up once a week or as per the package insert guidelines of dosing recommendations to the maximum dose of 10 micrograms per kilogram. For l pag, you start at uh, 50 milligrams, but there are three different dosing levels, 25, 50, and 75 and so it's not as easy to fine tune. Uh, the toxicities of this class of agents tends to be similar for the two agents, so there are warnings, precautions, and toxicities to be aware of. For l pag, it needs to be taken on an empty stomach um, at least four hours before a meal, and that can be a challenge for some patients. There is also an interaction with polyvalent cations, so you cannot take the medication with anything um, containing calcium or magnesium or aluminum or zinc. So that also can be a challenge and patients have to adjust taking their other supplements. Uh, l Tromopag has an additional toxicity and that is it can cause some elevation of uh, liver function tests in some patients. These are rarely severe and generally reversible uh, when the drug is discontinued or even dose reduced in some cases. Um, Romiplastin doesn't have that uh, toxicity. Uh, their toxicities are similar. There's probably a very small incidence of increased reticulin development in the bone marrow after treatment with these agents. Um, you know, I think it's somewhat arguable whether they increase the risk of thrombosis in ITP. In many of the randomized studies, there was no increase in thrombosis in the group of patients that received these drugs versus placebo. In some of the extension studies, it looks like perhaps the risk of thrombosis may be increased a little bit by these, uh, by these agents, but I think, that, uh, I think that this has to be viewed in light of the, uh, I think, fairly accepted uh, idea that ITP itself is associated with a little bit of an increased risk of thrombosis. Duration of treatment with TPO memetics is interesting. These agents were not developed to alter the biology of the disease, but really to just allow for increased platelet production. So they're thought to be maintenance treatments 
that once started would need to be continued if a patient is having a response. We know that um, from long-term extension studies of both agents that continuous administration retains a response for these drugs for patients that are responding. Responses seem to continue long-term for as long as the drug is administered and appears to be safe without any cumulative toxicity um, of, of any issues. When we were testing, I was involved in the um, the initial uh, phase two and phase three trials of remiplostim, which as I said is a, a once a week subcutaneous injection. And I remember there was one patient on the study who was having an excellent response and then couldn't come in for her weekly injection because of a terrible snowstorm in New Jersey. And so she wasn't able to get her drug that week and when she came back the following week, her platelets remained in the normal range. And so we continued to follow her and she had a sustained response to the drug remiplostim without continuous administration. So that was something anecdotal that we experienced, but it looked like this particular patient without continued dosing was actually sustaining platelet counts in normal and acceptable range. There's been growing experience with this, uh, with similar outcomes being observed with increased use of this drug. So at this, um, at this ASH meeting, there actually will be an abstract presented about a trial that was designed to look at the remission rate of a 24-week period of remiplostim. And so I can't um, speak to the data exactly, but it is, uh, it is going to be presented at this conference. And I believe that the remission rate was 37%, uh, meaning that patients with the defined period of treatment with remiplostim and then stopping the medication still, still uh, sustained a response in 37% of patients and the duration of that response was I believe 11 months. So more to come about that. But in general we believe that we'll need to you know, continue administration of the thrombopoietin memetics as long as we want to keep platelet counts in good range. Um, then there's also cost. So sometimes copay assistance is less with an, uh, an office-based subcutaneous administrated therapy versus um, a pill that would go on your, on your prescription plan. And so it's really an individual choice for each patient.